in five minutes people forget you. Okay, so uh, this is an important point, and uh, in uh, in science, what about in art? This kind of yeah. competition. It's very similar. Uh, I don't know if uh, you're familiar with a book called Renaissance Rivals. Thoroughly recommendable. It's in softback now. Uh, it's a beautiful book about all the rivalry between the different Titian, Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo. Fascinating read. It gives you an insight into the, the mentality of each and how they compete with each other. And it gives you an understanding of how such great art uh, appeared. I think rivalry is very important. Uh, and sometimes it can, it can get a bit nasty. But I don't think it has to be nasty. For instance, um, I'm introducing uh, a number of artists to my studio in San Marco in the next year uh, because they're so talented. And I want them to really up my game. <laughs> I want them to really challenge me, because I, I feel I need that. Because uh, when you work, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you artists would appreciate that, a lot of the time we work on our own. And uh, sometimes it's, it's less productive than it, than it could be. So sometimes it's good to, to challenge yourself, challenge your ideas, challenge your, 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 your talents. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to this, and one, one of the reasons I'm doing it is because I, I'm basing my studio on the Bottegas of the 15th century, uh, basing on Ghirlandaio's studio from which Michelangelo came. Uh, and uh, this, is, this, is a, this is an idea which uh, I, I don't believe that I'm a great artist, but I believe that I can provide a, an environment in which great artists can grow. And in order, and, and that demands a certain amount of humility to actually have some young artists come in and then kick your ass. <laughs> excuse the, excuse the phrase. But I mean, that's essentially uh, what I'm inviting. And uh, as as far as I'm concerned, that is a success. To be actually be to be outdone by a student, I believe, is a real success. Uh, and. Uh, and I've seen a lot of instances where uh, teachers have actually kicked out students because they were a threat. And I think it's important to invite that threat uh, so that you grow, and that demands humility. Uh, I'm not saying I'm humble, but I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it on anyway. <laughs> we'll see how it works out. And I, I think that another very important point is creativity, you know, the, the, the way you are able to create. Uh, well. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, Einstein always says that uh, to be a good physicist, uh, you, you don't need to, 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 be, to be a very, very strong mathematician. And in fact, he had problems in mathematics. Um, well, this is true. But this is true, he was, he was joking, of course, because he was very strong in mathematics. Um, because, I mean, to be creative, you must be very, very professional in physics. Very professional. If you are not professional, you cannot create. You can just, you know, put some pieces together. But creation, creating a, a, a piece of art, it means that you want to express something very deep. You want to express your, your human being, your feelings, uh, the deepness of reality. And if you want to really be able to express it, you have to be very, very good from the technical point of view. So, one thing which is very, very important in physics or in science in general, in science in general, is that uh, if you want to be free and if you want to be uh, really uh, creative, you must be very, very good from the professional point of view. You must be very strong about the culture, the techniques, the knowledge. Uh, you must really uh, have in your hands uh, what you want to talk about. Um, there is no space uh, for uh, creation, deep creation from, uh, from uh, people that uh, they just uh, trying to invent without uh, any background. Someone else can say, so, oh, you, you are more free. I mean, if you don't have the architecture in your mind, you know, you don't have the, the knowledge, you don't have the techniques, you're free to create. Well, I mean, maybe from the statistical point of view, it's, it's, it's correct. But I think that, that there is, on 100 people,
that uh, are ignorant. The possibility to express uh, real art is maybe 1%. Or real science, it's impossible. It's 0%. It's 0% science. So, what about in, in, in art? Oh yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an area very, very relevant uh, to the artistic creation. Because I believe, personally, that, that an artist abstracts from reality. Uh, to communicate deeper aspects of who we are. Now, to abstract, you have to have an understanding. Uh, that's why, personally, I believe that the greatest abstract artists were the earliest abstract artists, in, because they had academic training, they had a, an understanding, they could see. I think, uh, uh, personally, uh, uh, my own opinion is that an artist uh, who can't see, a visual artist who can't see, uh, that, that's a problem because if, if an artist is, is, is to communicate visual aspects of reality and existence and they can't see, well then it's kind of blind leading the blind. So uh, I think the most important thing is to have the capacity to see. Uh, and, you, it, and once you can see, and, uh, and that's in a word drawing, <laughs> if you can't draw, which is the fundamental ABC of the vocabulary of the artist, then you don't have for information to abstract from. The more information you have, the more knowledge you have, the more capacity you have to draw from reality. And drawing is a proof of seeing. Uh, and it, it, is, it is an intelligent act. It's like literature, it's like writing. It's an intelligent act. Now, if you haven't got the capacity to draw, then you're, 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 uh, you're really inhibiting your work. I think it's really important to develop the capacity to draw so as to be able to abstract more information, to have more information to abstract from. Uh, and all informed decisions are much better than uninformed decisions uh, in, in every aspect of our life. And I don't see why it should be different for an artist. I think uh, a doctor who hasn't got a clue about anatomy I would be very worried on his operation table. <laughs> uh, and I think an artist has the same responsibility if he's dealing with the figure, is to understand the anatomy so as to abstract from it and to communicate better. Yeah, at that point it comes, uh, it comes very uh, naturally, the question is how the state of mind of a person, how his culture influenced the, the creation, influenced the discovery. I mean, from the scientific point of view, I mean, there, there are many examples of people using drugs, for example, or people that, uh, in science, they, they are not complete uh, uh, human beings. They have some aspects which are com completely not grown from the, uh, from the human point of view. There are, they are fantastic genius, but they are autists, for example. They are uh, fantastic uh, inventors, but they are not able to, to have a person to live with. Um, so, I was always asking myself, uh, do, you, do, do, you, do I prefer to have in my group someone who is uh, tremendous from the technological point of view, but uh, completely a disaster from the human point of view? Or do I prefer to have someone in my group uh, who is not so genius from the technical point of view, but is a good, is a good man, is a good woman. This is able to talk with others, is able to help others, is able to work in an equip. Definitely, the second choice, definitely. No, no one, one second of hesitations. Because